Yes, a glorious guide to NFTs and art. Look, NFTs are hot right now. NFTs, also known as ERC-721s, are a token standard that was created on the Ethereum platform. Now, if 2020 was the year of DeFi, it's feeling like 2021 is going to be the year of NFTs. NFT stands for non-fungible token and is a token standard similar to the ERC-20. Again, ERC-20 is like Link, Aave, Maker, all those goodies that are found on the Ethereum chain. An NFT or a non-fungible token is a token that is non-fungible. This means that they are starkly unique from each other, and one token isn't interchangeable with any other token of its class. A good way to think about it is one dollar is interchangeable with any other dollar. One dollar is going to have the same value of another dollar. Those are fungible tokens. That's like ERC-20s. One link is always going to be equivalent to one other link. By contrast, is going to be NFTs. Those of you nerds out there would know, like, a Pokemon would be a good example of an NFT. Your one Pokemon is going to have different stats, different movesets, and isn't interchangeable with any other Pokemon. Or maybe a more relatable one is like a trading card, a unique piece of art, or the like. So that's what these NFTs are. They are non-fungible, non-interchangeable tokens that, for the moment, are best represented or thought about as digital pieces of art that are incorruptible and have a permanent history of who's owned them, who's deployed them, etc. Now, like I said, NFTs are just a token standard. So you can actually make them do much more than just be art. You can give them stats, you can make them battle, you can do really unique things with them, you can do pretty much whatever you want with them. But right now, the easiest way to think about it, and the most popular way to think about it, is by calling them art. 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 It's art. Or some type of collectible, or just anything that's unique. Now, they've been getting a ton of buzz recently because we've been seeing more and more of these being sold at insane prices. Like we saw Axe Infinity sell nine plots of their land, nine plots of their unique land, for $1.5 million. We also saw the original creator of the Neon Cat, you know, this cat, <laughs> sold for like 300 ETH. So apparently people really value these things. So like I said, they're just tokens that are deployed on a smart contract platform, and you can view them on different NFT platforms like OpenSea or Rarible. And these are the NFT marketplaces that let people buy and sell them. You obviously can do that without these marketplaces because it's decentralized, but they help and give a good user interface. Now, like many of you out there, my initial thought to NFTs was, okay, this sounds pretty dumb, but I think that that was dumb. I think art does have a lot of value, and I think that artists are not always paid fairly for what they do. And this is actually a huge issue right now in the modern day world where an artist can make some type of art, people just copy paste it, you know, everywhere, and, uh, and they never get attribution for what they made. So having a really easy decentralized royalty mechanism or some type of mechanism where these artists can get accurately comped for what they're doing, I think is really important. I love music. I love movies. Those are pieces of art that I digest and I really like. And I think it's fair for them to get comped appropriately because they are providing value to my life. I think NFTs are a great way to solve this issue as kind of having these decentralized audit trails and, and royalty trails that we can set up and and see really transparently without having to go through some centralized service. So that's the basic gist of it. Let's talk some more about the standards. The ERC-721 standard or the NFT standard. This is the basis of it all. There is another standard that's semi-fungible tokens, the 1155. We're not going to talk about that here, but you can check it out. The main differences between a 721 and an ERC-20. On ERC-20s, they have a really simple mapping between an address and how much that address holds. 721s have unique token IDs. Each token ID has a unique owner. And in addition, they have what's called a token URI, which we'll talk about in a minute. Each token is unique. Each token ID represents a unique asset. So since these assets are unique and we want to be able to visualize them and show what they actually look like, we need to define those attributes of the object. If it's a piece of art, we need a way to define what that art looks like. If it's some type of character in a game, we need a way to define that character's stats in the NFT. This is where metadata and token URIs come in. So if you know anything about Ethereum, you know that sometimes gas prices can get pretty high, especially when it comes to storing a lot of space, it can get really, really expensive. So one of your first questions might be, well, are they storing these images and, and these art pieces on chain? And the answer is sometimes. Back when they were coming up with NFTs and artists were deploying stuff, the ETH devs and the artists were like, yeah, art, let's do that art. I'm just gonna deploy this one megabyte image onto the Ethereum chain and oh God, it's so much gas expensive. How do I hit the delete button? 
<laughs> I don't know why. It's not dumb. It's not deleting. <laughs> and they realized that if they put all this art on chain, it was going to be incredibly expensive. So to get around this, what they did is they put in the standard what's called the token URI. This is a universally unique indicator of what that asset or what that token looks like and what the attributes of that token are. And you can use something like a centralized API or IPFS to actually get that token URI. Typical token URI has to return something in this format like this, where it has the name, the image location, the description, and then any attributes below. Now, if you're like me, your first question would probably be, we pull from a single source, seems pretty centralized. This is a current limitation of the NFT ecosystem. There is often this talk of on-chain metadata versus off-chain metadata. Because it is so much easier and cheaper to store all your metadata off-chain, a lot of people will use something like IPFS that is decentralized, but does take a little bit of centrality to keep persisting, but they can also use their own centralized API. However, obviously, if that goes down, then you lose your image, you lose everything associated with your NFT. Because of this, most NFT marketplaces actually can't and won't read off on-chain attributes or on-chain metadata because they're so used to looking for the token URI. Obviously, if you do off-chain metadata, you can't do anything really cool or really interesting or have any games with your NFTs. For example, if you wanted to create an on-chain Pokemon game, all your attributes would need to be on-chain in order for your Pokemon to interact with each other because if it was off-chain, then that becomes a lot harder to cryptographically prove. So if you're new with NFTs and you're like, wait, this is kind of a lot of information, I'll make it easy for you. If you're looking to render an image of an NFT, add your image to IPFS, add a metadata file pointing to that image file on IPFS, and then grab that token URI and put it and set it as your NFT. The Chainlink D&D article does a great job of walking you through this and showing you how to do this, so be sure to read that if you're looking to learn how to do that. We're not going to cover that in this video, but we will be deploying our first NFT with some on-chain attributes. Again, having your attributes on-chain is really going to allow you to build really creative NFTs that build games or have interesting properties and, and really makes the authenticity of your NFT guaranteed because those attributes are always gonna be on chain. After we go through this, leave comments in the description of what you learned, what you didn't understand, or if you'd like to see the full suite from deploying on a testnet all the way up to rendering it on an empty platform like OpenSea, like what we did with the D&D blog, let me know in the description and we'll do that. But for now, let's jump into the code. So after recording and editing this, I realized that it was over a half an hour long, so we're actually going to split it up into three videos. First video, which goes through all the conceptual stuff, what an NFT is, and the next video that you should go to right after this is going to show you deploying a really simple NFT, a really simple non-fungible token, and then the third video is going to be deploying a sick NFT. We're talking puppies! So head on over to that video, and I'll see you there.